Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Dead Joe Gaming back with another episode of Tech Talk for you guys. Today we'll be discussing the topic of whether or not you should get a next gen console currently. When I'm personally trying to make a decision uh, to get a new console, it comes down to uh, four basic things for me. Cost, spec, longevity, and exclusives. Now, that's not to say that you should follow my four things. However, these are uh, what I personally look for. So let's start with the PS5 and get into cost. The PS5 Digital Edition will cost you $399.99, while the Disc Edition will cost $499.99. Now, an official statement from Sony has revealed that no matter which version you get, both consoles will have the same exact specs. And whenever someone talks about uh, prices for tech, uh, that's often the deciding factor when making a purchase decision, right? And it should be. Uh, it's your money, money that uh, you worked for. So looking at these two prices, I can personally say that they seem reasonable. When talking about prices, often the topic of specs comes into play, mainly because you want to know when you spend that hard-earned money, you want to know what you're getting for it. So, both versions are rocking an AMD 8-core CPU, so you'll get smooth tasking uh, as far as programs go. The GPU will deliver upscale 4K resolution at 60 frames a second without ray tracing so no realistic shadows, and 30 frames a second with ray tracing. You're also getting 16 gigabytes of DDR6 RAM, which will help improve frame rate and loading time, so that's pretty nice. It's also the standard for gaming in general. Now, on to storage, which has become the topic recently. Sony is boasting a fairly mid-range one terabyte of storage, however, 670 gigabytes of that storage is usable due to system updates and whatever else. Just let that sink in. 670 gigabytes is usable for games that will be 100 gigs or more each. Then to add on to that, Sony said that they wouldn't allow gamers to use external hard drives. Now, there's been a lot of gamers pretty upset at this, and then there's been the group that uh, understands the reason. Some claim that using an external hard drive would affect uh, load times that the SSD produces. And they're right, right? However, for Sony to completely take away that option from consumers is kind of interesting. Uh, like, what if I was completely fine with increased load times if it meant I could have more storage? I guess we'll never find out. So what's giving you that internal storage is a custom SSD will give you, it'll give you very impressive load times and boot times. Uh, moving on to longevity. Now, when I say longevity, I'm talking about how will this console benefit me in the long run? What about this console is going to make me boot it up more frequently than any other console? So far, from what I can tell, it's the controller. Uh, Sony has put, uh, some serious effort into the new DualSense controller, uh, particularly in the haptic feedback department. Uh, as far as I can tell, um, I don't think the Xbox controller has the same type of haptic technology that Sony does, but you know what else helps with longevity? Exclusives. So, which obviously that's last on my list. Uh, for years, Sony has been one of the leads and exclusive titles from everything from uh, God of War to The Last of Us and anything in between. And that's what makes people want to buy their system. The fact that one could play or own a console and play games exclusively on that console and nowhere else tends to give gamers a good feeling, right? And plus it's good for sales. Moving on to Xbox, <laughs> price-wise, you're looking at $499.99 for the uh, disc version and $299.99 for the all digital edition, which is called the Series S and the Series X. Okay, a Series X is the, is the all disc version. Now, uh, and this is a big one, unlike PlayStation, you will not be getting the same specs for both consoles. 
with the Series X, that 499 price tag will get you an AMD CPU, 12 teraflop GPU, 16 gigs of DDR6 RAM, and a terabyte of storage. Possible 8K max resolution and a max frame rate anywhere between 60 and 120 frames a second. With the Series S, 299 will get you uh, an 8 core CPU, 4 teraflop GPU, 10 gigabytes of DDR6 RAM, a 512 gigabyte SSD, so very little storage, and a max output of 1440p with possible 120 frame rate. So the S sounds very appealing, especially uh, with that very reasonable price tag. However, for the tech enthusiasts who want top of the line specs, the Series S may not be the right choice for you. Now, as far as longevity goes, and as far as I know, the Xbox controller does not feature haptic triggers. Uh, while it is impressive, but it does not have those triggers, but you know what they do have that does contribute to longevity? Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. So if you don't know what Xbox Game Pass Ultimate it is, it's a subscription-based service that allows you to play new and old game titles as much as you want, whenever you want. So for $14.99 a month, you get access to over 100 titles with Xbox exclusive titles added day one as uh, in sync with the physical release, Xbox Live Gold, which will enable you to play online with friends, and you get EA Play, which will give you access to most EA game titles. So with that said, Microsoft seems to have longevity in mind when it comes to how do we keep our customers with our console? Now, as far as exclusives go, Microsoft is lacking. I mean, how many times can someone play uh, Halo or Gears before it gets boring? Microsoft, I'm going to need you guys to do something about that, especially with the recent acquisition of Bethesda. All in all, though, uh, those are the factors that I personally uh, think about when trying to make a decision on buying a new console. So to answer the topic of this video, no. I do not believe that buying the next-gen console is the right thing to do currently. The prices are appealing and the specs you get for those prices are great, but currently, but currently, there's no actual, for example, exclusives for the PS5. Most of them don't come out until next year or so. And with the Xbox Series X or S, uh, there's really no appealing exclusive at all. <laughs> so, however, uh, Game Pass may be a deciding factor for some, which is fine especially if you own a gaming PC, in which case there's really no reason to get an Xbox right now. So with that said, in the end, you make the choice that you want to make. This video is just my personal thoughts on the subject. Okay, that's it. With that said, uh, this has been Dead Joe Gaming. <laughs> Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for the support. Um, real quick, before I end this video, 200 subs, guys. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so, so much for supporting my channel and just being awesome, okay? I really appreciate it. I never thought I would get to 200, let alone, you know, back in the day, 50 or whatever. So with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.